HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Gentlemen, and welcome to the turf fields at Hopkinton High School for Hopkinton Hillers Baseball on HCAM. We are moments away from getting this playoff matchup started. It's the ninth seeded Milton Wildcats who stand at 12 and 9, and the first seeded Hopkinton Hillers who stand at 13 and 5 in the South Division II bracket. Of course, this is one of the tougher brackets in the state, so any matchup is certainly going to be uh, difficult here today. Let's take a look at the Hillers' defense as I welcome in my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad. Larry, why don't you tell us about the Hillers' defense here well, today? Well, we got some changes from the normal defense. We got Ronnie Seamus at third base, Ben Kyle McKenzie, at shortstop, Cole Glassburn at second base, uh, Ryan Kester playing first, Drew Rancatori in left, Tommy Ambersoni in center, Connor Kelly, the outstanding sophomore in right field, Stevie Simos behind the plate, talk to, talk to you a little bit uh, more about him later, and we have Brendan, Brendan Donald Kelly pitching this afternoon. And we would get you the Milton batting order, but we have not been given their lineup yet. But I can tell you one thing, leading off is Jack Boylan. Wearing number two for the Milton Wildcats. Milton is led by head coach Brendan Morrissey. The Hillers led by head coach, of course, Steve Simos. As the first pitch is just high, 1-0 and oh, on Boylan. For Brendan to be successful today, he's got to stay away from the middle of the plate and work the corners. That pitch down low, two and oh. Well, Milton uh, got a nice first round win to get to this point. The Hillers had the bye in the first round, so this is in fact the first playoff game for the Hillers. That pitch up high, three and oh. Milton defeated North Attleboro in the first round, seven to two. Good. It was an upset victory. North Attleboro was the eighth seed. That pitch is in there for a strike. Three and one. Brendan will throw that slider, and if it's working, Coach Simos will have him throw it back to back or even back to back to back. There's another strike to fill up the count, and Larry, certainly a nice day out here for baseball. Yeah, the HCAM... Uh... Weather says 74 degrees and partly sunny skies. Wind is no factor today. As this is hit high in the air, right side, and ranging over to his left to make the catch is Cole Glassburn for the first out of the inning. That's what college players do. Future Cardinal, Catholic University. No problem with that pop-up. So one away here. And stepping in now for Milton is number six, Finn Doherty. Finn is listed on the roster as a pitcher. We'll see if it's him taking the hill today. Up high. One and oh. A lot of tension in the air here. It's not like seventh game of the Stanley Cup, which I'll get to in a minute with you. Down low. Nice to see a few of the uh, alumni strolling in. A little late as usual. There's a strike. Mm. There's a gift, I think, Tom. Eh, perhaps. <laughs> 
You always can tell the pitcher's dad. He sort of makes himself, there's a fly ball on the right field. Connie Kelly shading his eyes, makes a grab. Second out in the inning. So Finn Doherty flies out. That'll bring up Andrew Posse. He's wearing number 21. He's listed on the roster as a shortstop. Again, we apologize. Milton uh, didn't get their lineup until very late, but we're going, uh, got the roster here, so we'll be able to get you who's coming up. Talking to Coach Simos before the game, he likes this kid. He says he's legit. Watch him in infield, outfield. That's true. Called strike. This umpire's going to be good for us today, Tom. I think so. Makes noise. We like noise. Charles Walker is the cleanup hitter. Do up next, Shell Posse reaches. That pitch is just outside. Kelly set to deal. Hit high in the air, over to left field towards the wall. See you later, home run. One to nothing, Milton. Guess that's why he hits third. Andrew Posse goes yard and puts the Wildcats up one to nothing. It wasn't a Lansdowne Street shot. It was just over the fence, Tom. Come on. Just over, just over. No credit, no credit. Still a run. <laughs> We'll bring up Charles Walker, the, who's listed as the catcher. I think they call him Chuck. Swing and a miss. Nice breaking pitch from Kelly. He looked bad on that one. Light up and the pitch. Up high. One and one. Brendan gave up a dinger in, I think, his last outing against... Norwood, ball just floated over the center field fence. Inside, two and one. Well, we had a pair of flyouts and a home run to start this top of the first off. Line up and the pitch, upstairs, three and one. Brendan's very much a rhythm pitcher, so he's got to get himself in a groove. Kelly delivers, and this is up the right side, picked up by the first baseman, Kester. He'll step on the bag, no problem. And that'll be the third and final out of the inning, but Milton gets a solo shot, and they lead it one to nothing as we head to the bottom of the first on H-Cam. Yeah. Bottom of the first inning, the Hillers trailing Milton one to nothing after a solo shot for the Wildcats in the top of the first. On the mound today for Milton is Ross Dexter. Let's get you the lineup that he will be facing. Ben McKenzie, the shortstop, starts things off for the Hillers. Steve Simos, the catcher, hitting second. Tommy Ambersoni, the center fielder, hitting third. Ronnie Sheamus, the third baseman, hitting cleanup. First pitch is in there for a strike. Connor Kelly, the right fielder, hitting fifth. Brennan Kelly, the pitcher, hitting sixth. Robbie Pangliuca, the DH, hitting seventh. Cam Jarrett, the left fielder, hitting eighth. Cole Glasper in the second baseman, hitting ninth. And Ryan Kester, the odd man out of the lineup today, playing first base as that is fouled away. I'll make it 0-2 on McKenzie. Ben's bus with great speed, so anything, anything like a dribbler on either line, he'll probably beat it out. Dexter set to deliver, fouled away. We don't have an international audience today, Tom, unfortunately. We do have uh, maybe a California crowd, maybe some nurses from New Wellesley Hospital or something listening in. Terrific. Ooh, that's, uh, we certainly want to welcome everybody watching on our YouTube stream. That was a gift. Ben's lucky to still be standing there. Do a lot of the games live on YouTube.com slash HKMTV as this is hit over towards right center, towards the fence, and that'll drop in. And that is going to be a ground rule double for Ben McKenzie as it hops over the fence. So McKenzie gets things started off on a good note for the Hillers, and now Steve Simos will come to the plate. Did I tell you I hate turf? Now I really like it because you get a good bounce off turf. See? Yeah, well, all right. Getting a really good crowd pumping in the loop road. Stevie Simos, uh, the two-time Tri-Valley MVP award winner. All around good kid, too. Ball in the dirt. One and oh to Simos. 
Bet you didn't know this, but he won the Marion T. Harris Award for academics and character. And the, of course, the TVL Large Player of the Year. Hit above a 500 during the regular season. Four or five bombs. But he's done it twice in a row. That's really unusual. If you go back to 2017 with Alex Reynolds, that's three in a row from Hopkinton. That pitch is in there for a strike. Some college scouts snooping around here. There certainly is. Probably looking at Posse. The shortstop who hit one over in left field. Upstairs. <laughs> Stevie Simo's got great power. Right field, the better watch out. Wind up in the pitch from Dexter is up high. That'll make the count three and one on Simos. Actually, uh, the entire outfield is playing Simos kind of shallow at their own peril. There's a walk to Simos. That'll put two on with no outs for the Hillers. Simos at first, Ben McKenzie at second. And coming up to the plate is Tommy Ambersoni, the center fielder. Let's play a little strategy. Will he lay down a bunt here and move the runners over? He's an excellent bunter, probably the best bunter on the team. Very possible. He may show bunt. And the pitcher will step off, runners back. But of course, they've been watching all of our telecasts, so they know that. No fair, no fair. <laughs> Line up and the pitch. There's a bunt pulled back. Yeah, they know that. They know that. Coach Simos chastised me before the game. Hey. <laughs> well, you do give off a lot of uh, information. Sometimes. Very resourceful guy, Larry. Yeah, lots of snakelets, dead bits, all that kind of good stuff. Line up and the pitch. Inside. Two and O oh on Ambersoni. I've learned to pronounce his name finally after half the year, butchering it all last year. Watch me butcher it today, jinx myself. Wind up in the pitch. There's a bunt, and that's a fair ball. Slow roller picked up by the pitcher, throw to first. And he, the throw is in time, but the runners do advance, so a job well done by Amber Sony. Simos up to second, McKenzie to third, one away. And now the cleanup hitter, Ronnie Sheamus, coming to the plate. He's hitting over 420, maybe close to 450. Very impressed by him this year. Coach Simos is as well. He'll be his catcher next year. Got a chance of knocking two runs here. Down low to Sheamus. And we do have the Milton Field for you finally because uh, you know, do some observation of the numbers oh, out there yeah, since there was uh, no lineup sent in. <laughs> Lined up and the pitch, there's a strike. It's Ross Dexter, the pitcher. Behind the plate is Matt Finnegan, Graham O'Donnell at first base, Jack Boylan at second base, Andrew Posse at shortstop, Charles Walker at third, left to right, Tim Hoey, John Carey, and Finn Doherty. Excellent, excellent. Seamus steps out of the batter's box for a second, checking on a third base. Anything that uh, bounces in front of the catcher, gets behind a catcher, McKenzie will be off. Halfway down third now. Leg lift and the pitch down low. Two and one to Ronnie Sheamus. Dexter's pitching out of the full windup so McKenzie can take a stroll down the third baseline. Sheamus gets a piece of this one right to the second baseman. It goes two away. A lot of blood on that ball. I gotta wipe it off, gotta wipe it off. I've been following you on Twitter. Have you? And you gotta calm down. You just gotta <laughs> calm down with the referees in the Stanley Cup Finals. I don't know, I could just picture you sitting on the couch. Wait till you see me during football season. Oh Connor God. Kelly steps in. A pitch down low, one and oh. I love this kid, a sophomore. He's the closer. Played great right field. He's got a decent stick too, He's hitting over 300. Wide up and the pitch. Swing and a miss, one and one. Coach Simos really, really likes him. He told me that at the beginning of the year. Watch out for Connor Kelly. Nice Italian kid. 
Wind up in the pitch to the lefty, gets a piece of this one, and it's past the reach of the shortstop. One run is in, here comes Simos, he'll score as well. It's a two RBI single for Connor Kelly. He absolutely roped that ball into the outfield. Scalded, I'd say. Posse was a few inches too short on that one. Nice athletic move by him, but unfortunately, didn't get it. A two to one lead for the Hillers, and now Brendan Kelly, the pitcher, steps in. He's a threat to go deep. Last time against Norwood, he hit a 400 foot bomb to right, pick over, and in there safe. Walks up the base, does Kelly. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to have your call for Hiller's playoff baseball. John Ritz on camera here on this beautiful Monday evening. Beautiful, beautiful day. Checking at first, runner slides back just safe. Whole lot of playoff action today for the Hiller's spring teams. We Five do. teams in action. You got softball in action. They are on the road. And then also boys lacrosse on the road at Concord Carlisle and boys and girls tennis also in action. There's a strike. I got some predictions here on the, the other teams. Uh, well, Coach Simo says the girls will absolutely beat Walpole and the boys lacrosse team will absolutely beat Concord Carlisle today. I hope so. I hope, in the dirt. I hope we go 5-0 and oh today. Uh, who's we? Are you playing? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I said no on one of the teams I won't mention, and I'll run a lap if it doesn't happen. And I, I think they're all going to win, okay. all five. You could throw 100 tomatoes <laughs> at me while I'm running that lap. I'm not that quick anymore. Dexter with the pitch, and this is hit in the air, high in the air, to the wall. Adios! Home run, Brendan Kelly. It's 4-1 to Hillers. Big fly. You know, I'm really liking this field now. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad we're not. Well, that would have been out of the field too anyway, so. Brendan Kelly with the power. Helped himself. He is my favorite player. Oh, future minute man, Robbie Pagliuca. He's going to do something today. You know why? Because he's my favorite player. That's why. Pagliuca steps in with four runs already in. Two outs in the inning, a four to one Hillers lead. He's been clutch all year. Wind up and the pitch. Hit in the air, foul out of play. Call giant glass over there. Somebody's gonna get a windshield busted today. I got a feeling. Well, I'm not parked in the best place today, so well, hopefully it won't be might me. Might be yours, might be yours today. Have to get the insurance on speed dial. Wind up and the pitch. That's fouled away. Oh, and two. Well, we've had a whole lot of action so far in this first inning. I mean, you and me? Yep, we have. In this game, Larry. Anyway, game. the manager this year has been Gabe Lopez. Doesn't get a lot of mention. Now, if, uh, if there were runners on base, that would be a big buck. But no runners on base. That is in there for a called strike to wrap up the first inning, but not before. The Hillers plate four runs and they lead it four to one as we head to the top of the second on H cam. You're very excitable today, Tom, I gotta say. Well, it was an excitable bottom of the first. Oh, yeah. Stepping in is Ross Dexter, the pitcher, to face Brendan Kelly, who had a two run shot in the bottom of the first to make it a four to one game, fouled away. Start him off with a breaking pitch. Again, if that slider's working, it'll go back to back to back. For those of you scouting the game live, if you're the next opponent, that'll happen, but you won't see Brendan Kelly the next game. We'll just miss right there. One and one. Like to pass along well wishes to David Ortiz, Big Poppy. He's on his way back from the Dominican. I just don't know who could harm Big Poppy. Certainly not me. Certainly hope he is doing well and will make a full recovery. Wind up and the pitch to Dexter. Fouled away, count remains one and two. Tim hey, Ho I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. Tim Hoey, the left fielder, is due up next. Oh yeah. 
We'll recap the bottom of the first in just a moment. That is down low. In the bottom of the first, McKenzie started things off with a double. It was a ground rule double. Simos then walked, and then a sacrifice bunt by Ambersoni to push them both up to second and third. And then Connor Kelly with a two RBI single. This is hit in the air over to center field. And McKenzie a little tripped up, but no problem. Tommy Ambersoni's there, one away. McKenzie was backpedaling on that one, so that was uh, Tommy Ambersoni's ball all the way. Called him off. Yep. He had his shades on. He came prepared. I think he intentionally tripped himself yeah, there. Yeah, well, Ben's not wearing any sunglasses. I don't know what that's all about, but. In any case, that brings up Tim Hoey. Continuing on with what happened in the bottom of the first. Two RBI single for Kelly and then a two-run homer for Brendan Kelly. We've been lucky all year to have our viewers supporting Hiller Sports. And that pitch is in there for a strike. Kelly set to deliver. Upstairs. A little high, a little high. You gotta bring that pitch down. Stay out of the meat part of the plate. Followed away. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Crowd starting to fill in the bleachers. Kelly deals. Down low. Just missed. A couple of college uh, baseball players out there. Ben McKenzie going to Bowden. He's going to be a polar bear, but you didn't know that. Awful cold up in Maine. Full count pitch coming up here. And there's strike three, two away. Sit down, grab some aluminum. Catholic University coach will be lucky to get Cole Glassburn, great kid. No predictions for once before the game. He just said he's gonna have a good one. Stepping, so I trust him. Stepping in is the DH, Kyle Cowell. Line up and the pitch from Kelly, down low. What's this kid's last name? Is it Kyle? Kyle. Kyle. It's a diminutive gentleman. How'd you like that for a college word, diminutive? Up it's the left open. side, yep. past the dive of Sheamus, into left field it goes, and it's a two-out single for Kyle. You always gotta watch out for those guys that are lower to the ground. I'll bring up Benjamin Ryan. Excuse me, it's Graham O'Donnell at the plate, the first baseman. There's a strike. Brendan does not have a great move over to first, but he will step off. He will hold the ball a little bit longer, mix things up a little bit. Runner on first, two outs, the 0-1. Yes. There's strike two. Definitely went around there. Yeah, that's a slider. Bet you hundred bucks, Coach Simos has him throw that one again. Line up in the pitch. And this is up the right side. That'll trickle into right field, and it's going to be a two-out single. Kyle up to second, O'Donnell over at first. Two on, two outs. Hung that one a little bit. Sean Carey stepping in now for Milton, the center fielder. Milton batting order is Jack Boyle in the second baseman. Finn Doherty, the right fielder, hitting second. Andrew Plossy, the shortstop, hitting third. Hitting cleanup third baseman, Trolls Walker. Ross Dexter, the pitcher, hitting fifth. Tim Hoey, the left fielder, hitting sixth. Kyle Call, the DH, hitting seventh. Graham O'Donnell, the first baseman, hitting eighth. And John Carey, the center fielder, hitting ninth. Wind up and the pitch. In there for a strike. A four to one Hiller's lead here in the top of the second, but Milton has two on with two outs. Kelly working from the stretch. 
Both runners with a slight lead, just high. Brendan's gonna be heading to Stonehill College next year. He'll be a Skyhawk. Kelly awaits the sign, takes a look at second and now is set to deal. In there for a strike, one and two. Right at the knees, beautiful pitch. $3,500 if you want to go to TD Garden just to walk in the door tomorrow night. You going to buy us some tickets, Larry? Yep, yep. <laughs> Line up and the pitch. And gets a piece of this one. It'll take a hop on the infield grass. The flip up by Kester over to Kelly. And that's good for the third and final out of the top of the second. To the bottom of the inning we go. It's a 4-1 lead for the Hillers on HCAM. Bottom of the second inning, due up for the Hillers, 8-9 and 1. Cam Jarrett, the left fielder, Cole Glassburn, the second baseman, and Ben McKenzie, the shortstop. The Hillers would certainly like to continue the offensive success that they had in the bottom of the first, in which they plated four runs. Let's take a look at the Hillers' playoff action going on today. Of course, we have this. South Division II quarterfinals baseball matchup between ninth seeded Milton and first seeded Hopkinton. And then for softball, it's the D1 quarterfinals, the South D1 quarterfinals, 13th seeded Hopkinton at fifth seeded Walpole, as that's a foul ball, 0 and 1. And then boys lacrosse, Central East Division II semifinals, the third seeded Hillers at second seeded Concord Carlisle. That game is a five o'clock start. There's a ball, one and one. And then you have the boys tennis South Division II state semifinals happening right now at Hopkinton High School. First seeded Hopkinton up against fifth seeded Hanover. As this is a fair ball up the left side, picked up by the third baseman, throw to first, one away. That was Cam Jarrett, I think he came in and pinch hit for Drew Rancatori. Drew Rancatori had a little lower body injury earlier in the game. He was a, gonna be a game time decision. He gave Coach Simos the, yeah, I can play, but obviously Jarrett's in there for Drew Rancatori. Yeah, that was one of the late changes to the lineup as Cole Glassburn steps in. And there he'll get is. a piece of this ah. one right to the shortstop. Right in the screws, Tom. Ben McKenzie, the shortstop, will step in. Had a ground rule double in the first inning and scored a run. The girls' tennis team, they're participating in the South Division I state semifinals. And they are at number one undefeated Sharon. That match had a 3 p.m. start, so that match should be nearly wrapped up by now. We'll try to get you an update. How long do those matches last anyway, Tom? Yeah. Never been to one. It's, say about an hour and a half, hour 45. Yeah. Wind up and the pitch. Down low. Two outs in the inning for the Hillers, a 4-1 lead. You're in the bottom of the second. And this is hit in the air over to left field and it's in and out of the glove of Tim Hoey. McKenzie is gonna trip up a little bit running towards second and I think he just wanted to stop and go back to first because it was a pretty good throw in. But in any case, Ben McKenzie reaches on the error. Think he threw the brakes on or he wiped out? I think he threw the brakes on because the throw was coming in. He's pretty aggressive. Steve Simos, the catcher, will step in. I'm giving the left fielder an error. I but in the too. books, we'll give him a base hit because that's where we like to pad the stats. There's a strike. Simos singled in the first inning and scored a run. It's awful lonely out there when you blow up. Or actually, excuse me, walked in the first inning and scored a run. Checking at first, and they got him. I don't know ben ben McKenzie picked off for the third out of the bottom of the second to the top of the third we go. It's four to one Hillers on H cam. Top of the third inning, a four to one lead for the Hillers. Do up for Milton is the top of the order as Jack Boylan steps in and he'll follow that one off, 0 oh and one. Jack Boylan, Finn Doherty, and Andrew Posse do up for the Wildcats. Take a look at the bracket in just a moment. I'll let you know what's next for the Hillers if they win here today. You mean when they win here today? 
Be positive. Be positive. I don't like to jinx things, Larry. That's what they have written on their hats. Be <laughs> positive and keep smiling. That's right. Well, the winner of this game will take on the winner of Milford and Stoughton in the sectional semifinals. A swing and a miss for out number one. Oh, it's too bad. Oh, sorry. Sorry, young man. It'll bring up Finn Doherty, the right fielder. On the other side of the bracket in action right now, Whitman Hansen up against Westwood and Dartmouth up against Oliver Ames. So the winner of those two games will play each other in the other South Division II sectional semifinal game. Yeah, Westwood can't get beat bad enough. That's uh, just my own personal opinion. I'm not one to hold back on my opinions, but they stink. <laughs> the 0-1. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. 0-2 oh, now. That was sort of an Ole swing. Yeah, Brendan Kelly's dad told me he watched the Duxbury game from last year. Swing and a miss. Strike number three for out number two. That was a two to one loss. He came out when the score was one to one. That was Brendan Kelly versus Charlie Kuhn, if you remember that one. I do. Two one loss. Andrew Posse will step in the shortstop. Three strikeouts in the game for Brendan Kelly. There's strike one. He's in a rhythm. I like it. I like it. He's in a rhythm. Keep rolling. Trying to get a score out of Walpole. Down low. One and two. We'll let you know in a bit about some of the other TVL teams participating in the baseball playoffs still. Of course, there's Westwood on the other side of this bracket, but in South Division Three, as Kelly set to deliver the 2-1, you got Ashland taking on a Pontiquit today. Medway taking on Diamond. And there's a strike. He's slow two breaking and two. Pitch. Yeah. And you got Norton up against Dedham. All in the South Division Three bracket. Did you practice uh, pronouncing a Pontiquit? <laughs> Hit high in the air, over to left field, and it is caught by Jarrett. No problem for the third out of the inning. To the bottom of the third we go. The Hillers leading 4-1 to one on HCAM. Bottom of the third inning. Two up for the Hillers, two, three, and four. It is Simo, Sambersoni, and Sheamus. Ben McKenzie got picked off to end the bottom of the second. Wind up in the pitch to Simos, just high. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. John Ritz on camera. And Hiller is leading in this playoff matchup against ninth seeded Mil Milton, four to one. That's fouled away, one and one. It's a hot one. I don't think this is Milton's number one pitcher. Coach Simos went down and scouted them on Thursday, so this must be their number two. They'll bring out number one if they should move on. Wind up and the pitch. That's fought off foul, one and two. Looks like the right fielder got the scouting report from Stevie's previous at bat. He was playing in very shallow. Left field was playing in shallow. Just inside, two and two. In the center field there is uh, playing with some fire. He's way too shallow. Fouled away, good battle here between Simos and Dexter. It was nice to see Stevie's brother, Timmy, is heading back to West Point. He was a starting second baseman for the Black Knights. 982 fielding percentage, one of the best in the country. Ball outside. Full count now. Pretty impressive as a sophomore. Be your starting second baseman for a team like Army. Certainly is. He went to Zavarian Brothers, didn't play at Hopkins and High. And this is up the right side and past the reach of the second baseman. Went off his glove, and that's a single for Simos. I agree. That's a single. Oh, Bonified. absolutely. That, that would have been a very tough play to make. 
So it's one on, no outs for the Hillers. Tommy Ambersoni stepping in. He bunted his last time up, and he'll bunt in any situation. We saw him walk off last year. Bases loaded, suicide squeeze to win a game. Wind up and the pitch. There's a bunt pulled back inside, ball one. Catcher thought about backpicking Stevie Simos, but he's too smart of a player for that. And if he did get backpicked, he might be, uh, well. Checking at first, runner just back. We have an update of the game between Milford and Stoughton. The winner of that game plays the winner of this one. Right now, Milford leading one to nothing after two and a half innings. That bunt pulled back, inside pitch, two and oh. There is a doghouse built in at the Simos residence up the street. Stevie'd find himself in there if he got back picked. Try to keep you updated on that Stoughton-Milford game. Wind up and the pitch. Runner taking off from first, throw up to second, and he's safe. The throw bit off the mark, and the speedy Stevie Simos has another steal. After many attempts, I was able to get a score from the girls' softball. Walpole, three to nothing, Walpole. Uh-oh, what inning? Well, you're asking me <laughs> lots of information. <laughs> I got to just a score. I thought, Strike, huh? I thought they called you the low down Larry because yeah. you always had the low down. Yeah, I do have the low down. Two and one. I predicted that outcome, by the way. Dexter set to deliver. <laughs> Checking at second and the runner back safe. Simo's taking a bit of a risk there, and he might be a little shooken up. I don't know if the shortstop st stepped on him or if he just slid in weird, maybe he hurt his wrist. And the athletic trainer's gonna go out. He's got a sore right wing. Occasionally acts up. And I think it would take probably a broken arm to get him out of this game. No question about that. He's waving everybody away, no? <laughs> don't I'm bother good. me. I'm good. Just give me a minute. <laughs> Tommy Ambersoni had a sacrifice bunt, his only plate appearance back in the first inning. That pushed Kenzie and Simos up into scoring position to allow Connor Kelly to drive him in with a two RBI single. And bring Brendan Kelly followed up with a two run homer. And that pitch is going to be low and the runner taking off for first and Simos <laughs> taking off for third and Simos has another steal. He almost uh, took the base with him. Grabbed a hold of that thing for life. So Amber Sony reaches. It'll oh, be a but, pinch runner I think. I believe that was a walk no. and Ronnie Sheamus will step in. Those are those safety breakaway bags so he kicks it and it comes off its mooring there. No harm, no foul. Runners on the corners, no outs for the Hillers. Check in at first, runner back safe. Kid's got a good move, gotta say, gotta admit. Well, he's already picked one off today. They worked that design inside pick move at second base almost worked. There's a strike to Sheamus who hit a 462 during the season. Both runners taking a bit of a lead here. Checking at first, runner back safe. First baseman dropped that ball, Stevie would have dashed to the plate. They got to be uh, cognizant of that. They got a really fast runner on third base. Wind up and the pitch. I don't and know what he's just complaining low. about. That was, <laughs> it was not even close to being a strike. Certainly wasn't. One and one on Sheamus. Both runners continuing to take a lead. Dexter set to deliver. 
And this is hit up the middle. That'll get into left field. Here comes Simos around to score. And it's an RBI single for Sheamus. And the Hillers have a 5-1 to one lead. What are these uh, Miltonites called? The Wildcats? Yep. Not the Mustangs, right? Ambersoni <laughs> pushed up to second. Sheamus with the RBI single. Simon scores the run. Here comes Connor Kelly, who had a two RBI single back in the first inning. Nice piece of hitting by Sheamus. There's a bun, and that is foul. Oh, and one. Coach Simo still playing a little small ball. He's got Brendan Kelly, the big lug power hitter on deck. Catcher throwing some signals out to his middle infielders. Maybe if Tommy takes a little bit too greedy of a lead, they may throw down. Dexter set to deal. And it's a bunt, popped up, caught. So a little fly out there by Kelly on the attempted bunt, and that will be the first out of the inning. They, they smelled that one. They were right there. They certainly were, as Brendan Kelly will step in. He had the two RBI homer back in the first. Runners on first and second for the Hillers. One out, another run has scored. It's a five to one game. Down low. Catcher's got some good blocking skills. I gotta give him credit for that. Dexter takes a look at second and deals. Called strike, one and one. Got to warn our cameraman if uh, Brendan slices one down here, he's the first one to get it. You're protected. Well, you'll jump in front of him, right, oh, Larry? Not a chance of that happening. <laughs> Wind up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air over to left field, and that is foul. One and two. Hopefully I didn't break the camera. I think he was uh, panning over <laughs> panning over my way. That ball was slicing foul. Never had a chance of being fair. There's a called strike for out number two. I'll bring up Robbie Pagliuca, the DH. Two runners on, two outs. Five to one lead for the Hillers. Posse of the shortstop's gonna try and keep Tommy Ambrosoni close. The ever so dangerous Robbie Pagliuca at the plate. Fouled off, oh and one. It was nice to see Alex Reynolds the other day at the girls' softball game. Just coming off Tommy John surgery. Catcher for Babson. Wish him well. Wind up and the pitch. Down low. One and one. You ever had Tommy John surgery? I have not. I hear it hurts. He'll be ready. He'll be ready by March, he thinks, when they head south of Florida. Babs and Beavers. Fouled away. One and two. Just nubbed that. Pagliuca struck out and has only played appearance so far today. He's due. He's due. He's a clutch, clutch hitter. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away. Oof. That was pretty close to someone's car out there. Oh, don't be afraid. Milton's I think, got it, some warm, I think well, that actually landed between two cars parked yeah. on the side of the street. Well, they're illegally parked anyway, so they deserve it. Milton's got some warm, acti warm up activity in their bullpen. Wind up and the pitch. There's strike three for out number three. We will head over to the top of the fourth. The Aylers played another run 
and they lead it 5-1 to one on HCAM. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Top of the fourth inning, a 5-1 to one lead for the Hopkinton Hillers. Due up for Milton is 4-5-6, and six. Charles Walker, Ross Dexter, and Tim Hoey face Brendan Kelly, the windup and the pitch. In there for a strike, 0 and 1. For those of you who want to go see the Red Sox at 7.05 on Wednesday night, you're out of luck. It's been changed to 4.05 to accommodate the Bruins game. I would say that is a very smart decision. By Good business decision. <laughs> Absolutely. Right Put some fannies in the seats and then hit the bars on your way out the door. That's right. Or if you're at home, you can watch the Sox and yeah, like flip me. over to the Bruins. Well, they put it on the Jumbotron. That's foul ball. Fouled away. 0 oh, and 2. That would keep the fandies in the seats, right? If they put the Bruins game up on the big center field scoreboard. Well, I don't think anybody would be watching the Red Sox game at that point. Well, no, I mean, the game would be over. You know, have 38,000 uh, of your nearest and dearest friends watch the game. I don't know if they'll do that, but as this is hit in the air, what a play by Sheamus, jumps up and rips it down for out number one. Just like Snagglepuss. Well, there's wow. your defensive play of the day so far. And now Ross Dexter, the pitcher, will step in. I knew there was a reason why he changed the defensive lineup up. That was a beautiful play. I got to admit. Well, they passed Posse, the number three hitter. They've just got the cleanup hitter out of the way. And number five hitter. And this is a foul ball. Starting to like this turf field more and more. Get some extra bounce when you leap. Right, Tom? Absolutely. Seamus must have jumped up at least a foot to pull that down. At least. <laughs> Swing oh. and a miss, so and two. Ooh, he casted that bat out like it was a fishing rod. That was a nasty pitch there by Kelly. Working hard, but hardly working. And it'll sit him down, and the ball got away briefly from the catcher. Throw to first, no problem. Two away. Tim Hoey, the left fielder, will step in. I've been watching Brendan Kelly since he's been 10 years old. And this might be in his top five best games I've seen him pitch. So far, so far, long way to go. But looking good. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. 0 oh and 1. Well, if he keeps throwing like that, it certainly will be one of the best games he's pitched. Keeps throwing like that, I'll buy him a pizza. Down low. 1 and 1. That is just low. I just clocked him. He's about between 10 and 11 seconds between pitches. When he's not right, he's about 15 to 18 seconds between pitches. Line up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Two and two. That was a gift to Brendan. Thank you very much. It's 4.57 on the east for those that are watching on the west coast. Set to deliver. Just inside, says the home plate umpire. Full count. And this is hit into right field. That'll get down for a base hit. A two out single for Hoey. He'll bring up Kyle Cowell, the DH. Brendan is yet to pick over today. Another update from the Stoughton Milford game. Stoughton now leading four to one. Ooh, not a big fan of that. This kid hit a line drive in the outfield last time up. Down low. True? He did. 
Singled in his only plate appearance back in the second inning. Kelly from the stretch, runner leading off the bag at first. He delivers. As just outside, runner takes off, throw to second, and that is in time. Out number three, caught stealing is Tim Hoey. What a throw by Steve Simos. And we will head to the bottom of the fourth with the Hillers leading Milton 5-1 to one on HCAM. Dumb play that was. Bottom of the fourth inning, due up for the Hillers, 8-9 and 1. Cam Jarrett steps in. Hit high in the air, right side, foul territory, and no one can get there. 0-1. Oh, the Hillers leading Milton 5-1 to one here in this playoff matchup. The winner of this game advances on to the South Division II semifinals to take on the winner of Milford and Stoughton. And right now it's the Black Knights of Stoughton leading Milford 4-1 to one in that game. And we'll try to get you more updates as well from Ouch. that game. And Cam Jarrett yeah. takes one for the team there. Hope he's all right. We might be taking a road trip to Rockland perhaps. That is true. That's right, the semifinals, uh, I believe, is a neutral site location. And if the Hillers win, we'll certainly let you know where they will be next. Don't be surprised to see Cole Glassburn try to advance the runner with a bunt. Coach Simos known for small ball. And this is up the left side. That'll trickle into left field. Runners on first and second now for the Hillers. Jarrett pushes up to second, Glassburn at first, and Ben McKenzie, the shortstop, will step in. Connor Kelly heading down to the bullpen. Get loose, pinch runner for Jarrett. Bobby McGuire, no relation to Jerry McGuire. <laughs> Any relation to Mark McGuire? No, but Ty Doherty is going to Kenyon College, one of the pitchers this year. Population 2,300. Student population about 1,500, and 1,000 acre campus. One acre for almost every student. That's a little trivia for you. Pitcher steps off, runners both back. He'll be a lord. Did you know that? I did not. <laughs> How could you do that to the kids? Lords and ladies. Big athletic program down in Kenya. And McKenzie today has doubled and reached on an error and scored a run. Down low. One and oh. He's due for a big fly. He had one up at field two earlier. A few games back. Left center field shot. Usually where he hits him. Off a car or something. And it'll hit this one sky high, right side, and it is caught. Graham O'Donnell reaches up to pull it down, one away. Nice play by him. Stay with it with the fence closing in on him. Stevie Simos will step in, the catcher. Two on, one out. Big opportunity here for Simos, who is one for one with a walk, two runs scored, and two stolen bases. Coach Simos managing this game as if it's a one-run game. Line up in the pitch. In there for a called strike, 0-1. Oh Stevie looked that pitch all the way in. Tommy Ambrosoni do up next. They're gonna love him up at Bowden. In there for a strike, 0-2. Oh What's running through this pitcher's mind? I threw him three straight curveballs, two straight curveballs. Shall I throw him the, uh, the heater? Dexter steps off. Nobody keeping McGuire close. I don't know what that was all about. That's the mind game Steve Simos plays. He loves to do that. Mr. Hit by pitch himself only had three hit by pitches this year compared to 14 last year. Swing and a miss. Strike number three, four out number two. That's rare. 
That's so. a rare sighting to watch Stevie Simo strike out. Certainly is. Tommy Ambersoni will step in. It's rarer than the sighting of a cuckoo bird. <laughs> I'm looking at one right now. Right. I knew you were going to say that. Down low. One and oh to Ambersoni. Two on, two outs. A five to one lead for the Hillers here in the bottom of the fourth. Down low, two and oh. Got to watch out for Posse. He's a player. He'll sneak in behind the runner if given a chance. He'll get a piece of this one. Hit in the air to right field and it's caught. And that'll do it for the bottom of the fourth. It's a five to one Hiller's lead as we head to the top of the fifth on HCAM. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Top of the fifth inning, seven, eight, and nine do up for Milton. A five to one lead for the Hillers. Brendan Kelly continues out there on the mound. Kyle Call, Graham O'Donnell, and John Carey do up for the Wildcats. Coach Simos has a lot of confidence in Brendan. There's a swing and a miss. He gave him the ball in the uh, semifinals against Greater New Bedford Regional Tech. Pitched a great game, came out, out of seven, came out after seven. There's strike two. Only to come up short. I think it was three to two, the final in that game. Then last year he came out after Pitching seven innings against Duxbury. Swing and a miss. Dig it. Go down. That is the fourth strikeout of the day for Brendan Kelly. Graham O'Donnell will step in. He dueled Charlie Kuhn all the way to seven innings, one to one, and they lost it in the eighth inning, if you recall. Down low. Graham O'Donnell has singled so far today. Fouled away. Thanks for the sports drink, by the way. My pleasure. You can pay me later. All right. Give me a raise. <laughs> <laughs> one and one. We get overtime for this? You don't. The one two pitch from Brendan Kelly. And it is up the right side, picked up by Glasper, and throw to first, not a problem. Two away. Four to three on the out. John Carey, the center fielder, will step in. I do have an inquiry from California, wants to know the score in the middle of a meeting. 2.30 out there approximately. A five to one lead for the Hillers. Upstairs, one and oh. He can get the eight and the nine hitter. He'll be well on his way. And this is up the left side, picked up by the shortstop. McKenzie throws over, not a problem. Six to three for out number three. One, two, three, they go. We head to the bottom of the fifth. The Hillers leading Milton five to one on H cam. Bottom of the fifth inning. Two up for the Hillers, four, five, and six. Ronnie Sheamus will start things off. He had an RBI last time. I got some hot news, hot news. Oh boy, breaking news. Hot news, right off the presses. Hopkinton five, Walpole three, top of the fifth inning. Oh That's boy, drive. Sheamus drives this to center, it's caught. Squared that one up really nice. I'll bring up Connor Kelly, the right fielder. So the Hillers Ooh. softball team leading Walpole five to three, what inning are they in? Top five, I could be running around Ooh, that track with boy. people throwing tomatoes at me. Beefsteak tomatoes, not the little cherry ones. 
I didn't predict that. There's a strike. Never bet against, never bet against the Hillers, John? Never. The lefty hitter, you better watch out. And this is hit high in the air over towards us. Foul territory out of everybody's reach. Oh, and two. There's a little uh, pitcher's mound activity over there. Left fielder almost uh, tripped over it. Connor Kelly has a two RBI single, a run scored, and he's flown out today. Wind up and the pitch. Foul tip. Count remains 0 and 2 on Kelly. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to be on the call for Hillers playoff baseball. John Ritz on camera. We're in the bottom of the fifth. The Hiller is leading 5 to 1. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away. He beat that one into the turf. Cole Glassburn down the bullpen warming up. Bobby McGuire catching him. Cole's been very reliable out of the pen. Set to deliver. And this is up the middle, and the second baseman gets to it. Throw to first just in time. Two away. Four to three on the out. Brendan Kelly, the pitcher, will step in. He's one for two with a two-run homer back in the first. A nice play by the second baseman there. Nice play. Certainly was. There's no win to be had here, but let's see if uh, Brendan can lose one. And therefore a strike. An update on the Stoughton-Milford baseball game. The winner of this game will play the winner of Stoughton and Milford. And right now Stoughton leading after four, six to one. Brendan went down swinging his last time up. Hopefully he doesn't repeat the, the mission there. It's definitely not their number one. Nice job, Brendan. This is definitely not their number one pitcher. I don't know how many pitches he threw on last Thursday. Wind up and the pitch to Kelly outside. They're going to ride him. Dexter set to deal. Outside there. Coach Simo said his leash will be fairly short today. Up high. Full count on Brendan Kelly. But he hits him, he doesn't get cheated, I'll tell you. Swing and a miss, and the Hillers go down one, two, three, here in the bottom of the fifth. We'll head to the top of the sixth. It's five to one. Hillers leading on H Cam. Top of the sixth inning, due up for Milton, is the top of the order. Second baseman Jack Boylan, right fielder Finn Doherty, and third baseman Charles Walker. Brennan Kelly continues on into the sixth inning, pitching a great game so far. High school games are seven innings, for those of you who are wondering. Kelly has four strikeouts on the day. And this is hit up the right side. That'll trickle into right field for a single. A little life out of the Milton dugout. They haven't had much to cheer about so far this afternoon. So a runner on with no outs for the Wildcats. And Finn Doherty, the right fielder, will step in. Here's where things get ugly from the dugouts. Doherty is 0 for 2 so far today. Brendan steps off the back of the rubber. There's a the ball. Brendan's an old pro at this. You can yell and scream and do whatever you want. It's not going to shake him. Line up and the pitch. In there for a strike, one and one. Hey, 
Set to deliver. Check <laughs> swing. Did he hold? It doesn't matter. It's strike two. Yep, that's what happens. The umpire raises his right hand. It's a strike. Still trying to get word on the wall pole. Almost went. Two and two. My sources are abandoning me. And that'll fill up the count. It's kind of tough to take. You can find yourself walking back to the dugout. Kelly set to deliver. Up high, and Doherty draws the walk. That might uh, provoke a trip from uh, Coach Simo, so I'll have to talk to Brendan. And I think he is going to come out. Just uh, for a brief moment. Andrew Posse, the shortstop, will step in. So it's two on, no outs for Milton. He lost the ball earlier in the game. Homer to uh, left center. Up high. One and oh. And therefore, strike one and one. One swing of the bat, he could make it a one run game. No jinxing, no jinxing. Fouled away, one and two. Good pitch selection by Brendan. A little something off speed. He's sitting on fastball. Milton My mind's telling me. Fastball, fastball, dead red. Kelly looks at second and delivers. Upstairs, two and two. He knows the scouts are here to watch him. They already got their money's worth. Set to deliver. And that'll fill up the count. Well, you certainly don't want to walk this hitter with two on and no outs. The cleanup hitter on deck. And this is up the right side, and that is going to get through. Lead runner is going to be held up at third, so it'll be bases loaded with no outs for the Wildcats. Connor Kelly got that ball in. There was nobody there to cut that ball off. And here comes Coach Simos. Will he pull the plug on the day for Brandon Kelly? He wants a meeting on the mound. And it looks like... For the moment, he is not going to take the ball, but certainly a rough situation for the Hillers here in the top of the six. It's a five to one Hopkinton lead, but Milton has the bases loaded with no outs. I think he's telling them, get a sure out. Infield, go to the plate if you got an easy hop. We have a TVL boys lacrosse update. Dover Sherborne leading Medway nine to four at the half. As Charles Walker steps in. Kelly working from the stretch, bases loaded, no outs. Time called by the hitter. There's a strike, 0 oh and 1. Oh. All the Wildcats are standing in their dugout. They haven't had much to cheer about most of the afternoon. Can Kelly pitch his way out of this jam? Down low, one and one. The time called by one of the base runners to tie his cleat. Kelly from the stretch. 
He deals. And this is up the right side. That's going to get in. One run is in to score, and the lead runner behind him is held up. It's a 5-2 Hillers lead. An RBI single for Charles Walker. And the bases remain loaded with no outs. I'll bring up Ross Dexter, the pitcher. I see some alumni parents strolling in a little late. Well, Kelly was pitching very smoothly all game long. But here in this sixth inning in a bit of a jam, and Milton is threatening. Up the middle, picked up by the shortstop. He'll step on second for one, throw to first, and a well-needed double play. A run does come around to score, but there is now two outs in the inning. Ben McKenzie got to that ball quick. He knew exactly what he was going to do. We got our 2017 left fielders. Mom and dad come down, Judy and Don Wolf. So there is a runner remaining on third. It's Andrew Posse. Two outs in the inning. Tim Hoey will step in. A five to three lead for the Hillers. Down low. Line up and the pitch. And this is up the left side. Picked up by Glasper and throw to or McKenzie. Throw to first, not a problem. And it's six to three on the out. But Milton does plate a pair here in the top of the sixth. And as we head to the bottom of the inning, it is the Hillers five, Milton three. It's Hillers playoff baseball on HCAM. So what are the signs of an opioid overdose? And how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal naloxone? Well, everybody should have it, to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life. Bottom of the sixth inning, a five to three Hiller's lead. Seven, eight, and nine do up for Hopkinton as Robbie Pagliuca steps in and fouls the first pitch he sees away. Ross Dexter remains out there on the mound for Milton. Getting loose for the Hillers is Connor Kelly. He'll likely come in next inning to close things out. Outside, one and one. Pag struck out his last time up. I've got some news, hot news. It's a hot news flash. Oh boy, let's do I hear, hear it. The ma do I hear the music, the hot news magic flash? There's a ground ball towards us. Muffed by Josh Fisher. One and two. <laughs> Good attempt. Five, three. Five, three. Hopkinton over Walpole, bottom of six. Oh boy. It looks like I'll be running around that track. That Hiller's softball team making some noise in the postseason. They got a 14-6 win against Plymouth North this past Saturday. Now leading Walpole as there is out number one, a strikeout for Pagliuca. I think I jinxed him. And now Cam Jarrett will step in, the left fielder. Come on, CJ, a little base hit here. First pitch outside, 1-0. Two and oh. Looks like the Wildcats are going to ride this kid all the way. Swing and a miss. Two and one. Need a sand wedge to get that pitch. Not a good pitch to swing at. Hit in the air. Foul out of play. Ooh, that's near mine. Ooh. Just missed. Is that your car over there? Uh, same color. 
not the same car. You would have loved that, wouldn't you? Well, it's right next to mine, too. All right. <laughs> the wind was blowing just a little harder. It would have got you. And this is fouled off, off the pole. First time all year we've heard the pole <laughs> ding. Now remains two and two. Well, you mentioned Hiller's softball leading Walpole. If they win, they'll play the winner of Bridgewater Raynham in North Attleboro at Totten High School. That'll likely, I believe, be a weekend or a, a Thursday game and then a weekend I'm game busy. for the finals. I'm busy Thursday. I'll have to make it Friday. <laughs> it's Tanton, by the way. And this is up the middle, slow roller, and it's bobbled by the shortstop. A difficult play to make. Cam Jarrett reaches with one out. No, no scholarship for you, Posey. I'm giving him a single. Oh, yeah. Cole Glassburn will step in, the second baseman. Did you know he's going to be a cardinal at Catholic University? I think I've heard you say it before. I think I mention it every game. He's a good kid. Still 5-3 in Walpole. Swing and a miss. Might have got a little piece of that one. One on, one out for the Hillers. Milton will be down to their final three outs. They will. When we enter the top of the seventh. Connor Kelly getting loose for the Hillers. Checking at first, runner slides back safe. And Kelly's been their closer all season long, so. Likely to come in and try to close things out here. With that filthy breaking pitch. When Cole gets a hold of one, he's got deceptive power. Inside. Top of the seventh in Walpole. We would ordinarily be covering that game. Have camera will travel, but can't be in two places at one time. That's right. Down low. Good take, good take, Cole. Two and one on Glassburn. He's one for two today. He's flown out and singled. He's from Clarksville. I bet you didn't know that. I did not. I spoke to him last week about that. He said they wrote a song about Clarksville. The last train to Clarksville. He goes, oh, that's probably where I'm from. Upstairs. I said, no, have you ever heard of the monkeys? And he looked at me funny. Monkeys, what are the monkeys? Has he ever heard of the Beatles? I said, yeah, I heard of them. But they were like the Beatles, the American version. It's about Clarksville, Tennessee, not Clarksville, Maryland. And this is hit in the air over to right field, and that is foul. Just foul. I'll fill up the count. Ben McKenzie do up next. Jarrett would have ran all the way home if it had dropped in. Wind up and the pitch. And this Watch hit out, in John. the air Watch over out. towards us. And foul. <laughs> Full count. It's like Birkenstocks, socks on. Come on, Cole. Dexter set to deal. Full count pitch, and Glassburn wins the battle. Two on, one out for the Hillers. Warm up activity in the Wildcat bullpen. Second or third time they've had somebody throwing. That'll bring up Ben McKenzie. That may be all for this young gent. Thrown quite a few pitches today. It looks That's like we will have a pitching change for Milton. So we'll have a new pitcher for the Wildcats with two on and one out for the Hillers. Ben McKenzie coming up to the plate. But right now we'll take a short timeout. It's Hillers playoff baseball on HCAM. Pitching change for Milton coming in from 
Right field to take over on the mound is Finn Doherty. David Cicello, the new right fielder as Ben McKenzie steps in. Two on, one out for the Hillers here in the bottom of the sixth. Hopkinton has a five to three lead. Back to second base is Jarrett. He's gonna have to face two really, really good fastball hitters in Ben McKenzie and Stevie Simo, so better watch out. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Oh and one. Hot news, hot news right off the presses. Oh boy. Five to three going into the bottom of the seventh in Walpole at Bird Field, Bird Middle School. Three outs left for the Rebels. That is fouled away. Oh and two. Well, it must have been quite a pitching performance so far by the Hillers softball team. I think it would be Juliana Cedia twirling this afternoon. Feeling this kid's gonna drop a curveball in on Ben with the two straight fastballs. Inside, one and two. Just what he did. Wind up and the pitch. Down low, two and two. I was gonna say in the dirt, but it's in the turf. Kid's got quite the hose for his size. Two on, one out for the Hillers, a two-two count on McKenzie. A five to three lead for Hopkinton. Milton played it a pair of runs last inning. And this is up the left side. That'll get into left field. And the lead runner is going to be held up at third. That'll load up the bases with one out for the Hillers, a single for McKenzie. Did I not tell you? He's a good fastball hitter. Can't. That was a fastball, and he hit it. He certainly did. Now you have another good fastball hitter, and Steve Simos coming up to the stage. Yep. Yeah. Not going to sneak one by him. He's yeah. already seen his, seen his pitch sequence already. Cam Jarrett at third, Cole Glassburn at second, Ben McKenzie at first, Steve Simos to the plate. One out, bases loaded for the Hillers. On Stevie, lose this ball. Down low. He's been known to have some heroics in his long and illustrious baseball career. Fouled away, one and one. Nice rip. You could tell he was a ball player when he was five years old. He was just that talented. Certainly is. He also uh, defensively caught an, attempt, uh, an attempted steal today. Wind up and the pitch, down low. Two and one, briefly got away from the catcher, Matt Finnegan, but he's quick to get to it. Finnegan's done a good job blocking pitches today. Gotta, gotta say, give credit while credit's due. Doherty set to deliver. Check swing, did he hold? Yes. Three and one. Hot off the presses, hot off the presses. Five to four in Walpole with one out. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Simos tattoos this ball over to the wall, and that is going to drop in fair territory. One run is in, a second run is in, and here comes McKenzie as well, and it's a three RBI double for Steve Simos. Eight good, to three Hillers. Good fastball hitter that kid. <laughs> Really good fastball hitter. Big mistake pitch. Simos clears the bases. Cam Jarrett, Cole Glassburn, and Ben McKenzie all score. And the Hillers have a five run lead. Tommy Ambrosoni will step in. Still only one out in the inning. Just sucked the life out of the Milton dugout. There's a strike.
And that pitch is down low from Doherty, one and one. It's awful quiet over there in the Milton dugout. It certainly is. Eight to three lead for the Hillers here in the bottom of the sixth. A dejected bunch, I see. Just outside, two and one. A little more elevation on that last hit by Stevie, and that would have been a salami. Down low. Three Tough. and one on Amber Sony. Ben McKenzie, Stevie Simos, Tommy Ambersoni, Brendan Kelly, Brendan Kelly going to be playing ball this summer for Milford Post 59, American Legion. And there's a walk. That'll put runners on first and second. Still only one out in the inning. Ronnie Sheamus coming to the plate. And if you think Coach Simos is going to uh, make things easier for Milton, think again because I'm sure he, he's going to try to plate as many runs as possible. Foot on the gas, foot on the neck. It's playoff time. That's what it's all about. And Seamus, who's about to step in, is one for three today. Had an RBI single back in the third to score Stevie Simos. Finn Doherty going to stay on the mound for Milton. He didn't do anything wrong other than giving... Uh, up those two fastball bombs. Can't help it. Wind up and the pitch. Down low, gets away from the catcher and both runners are going to advance. It's only five full power of the day. Wild pitch there allows Simos to advance to third and Ambrosoni to advance to second. Only one out in the inning. Three runs have scored in this inning for the Hillers, courtesy of a three RBI double from Steve Simos. An eight to three Hopkinton lead. Wind up and the pitch. And there for a strike. Nice pitch right there. Very heavy traffic heading back to Milton, just FYI. The HCAM traffic copter is reporting in. <laughs> we got all the all the tools. Set to deliver. Called strike. One and two. And this is a fair ball. Simos is going to score. Throw to first. Not in time. Everybody's safe. That was certainly the most awkwardly hit ball of the day. But in any case, it does the trick. Simos scores. It's 9-3 to three Hillers. An RBI single for Ronnie Sheamus. Amber Sony up to third. Let's play mind reader here. Six run lead, seven run lead. Will he let Brendan Kelly finish the ball? Connor Kelly steps in. Ooh. And a easy steal there for Sheamus. Two in scoring position for the Hillers. Down low, that'll get by the catcher, and here comes another run for the Hillers. Ambrosoni will score. Finn Doherty just having a tough time out there. It's 10 to three, Hopkinton. I think he's gonna let his senior finish this game. That's my sense of it. I think so. Sheamus up to third, Connor Kelly to the plate. Ride the horse that got you here. 
Upstairs, one and oh. Well, the Hillers have certainly added some insurance in this inning. And this is hit foul. Or no, excuse me, hit up the right side. And that is past the center fielder, John Carey. Another run's going to score. Thanks for distracting me, Larry. All right, well. An RBI double for Connor Kelly. That'll make it 11-3, Hillers. And now Brendan Kelly will step in. Connor Kelly tattooed that ball. Hillers have batted around here in the bottom of the six, and they just continue to tack on runs. That's okay. And it looks like this time Coach Morrissey's going to take the ball. Do explain to the viewers at home what the mercy rule is in baseball in high school. Maybe 12 runs after five. So we will have a new pitcher for Milton. The Hillers have tacked on six more runs here in this bottom of the six, and they lead it 11 to three. We'll take a timeout on HCAM. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Continuing on in the bottom of the six, third pitcher of the game for Milton. Jack Long is out there to face Brandon Kelly. An 11-3 lead for the Hillers. And this is up the middle, picked up by the second baseman, throw to first. And they will get the out at first. Brrr, brrr. Four to three. I have a hot take. Out. This is sizzling hot. Well, first off, uh, Robbie Pagliuca coming to the play. Actually, we're going to have a pinch hitter. Alex Parker Hook. Connor Kelly advanced the third. Alex Parker Hook to the plate. Larry, what's going on? From Walpole. Hiller girls beat the Walpole Rebels 5-4. to four. Wow. I'll be running around that track. So Hopkinson softball defeats Walpole 5-4, to four, and they advance on to the semifinals in the South Division I bracket. Based on what I saw yesterday of the Walpole girls, I thought they would be unbeatable. That's why I made that little wager I didn't tell anybody about. <laughs> the Hillers have batted around, and Alex Parker Hook is hit by the pitch. Hope he's all right. And he will head over to first. Runners on the corners for the Hillers, two outs. Cam Jarrett stepping in. Yep. Going to get some words of wisdom from Coach Steve Simos. I don't think uh, either the shortstop or the second baseman will be covering the base. Previous attempt was defensive indifference. And therefore, a strike to Jarrett. So far today, Jarrett's grounded out, was hit by a pitch and singled, also scored a run. That was earlier this inning. Ooh, my phone is smoking, that's such hot news. Well, we are certainly happy that the Hillers softball season will continue on and we'll certainly be trying to follow them to the state semifinals matchup. And if this score holds up here at the baseball game, looks like we'll have two teams, at least two teams will be following on. And this is going to be up the right side. And is that fair? Yep. Yes, it is. Barker Hook up to third. And everybody's going to be safe. Blooper down the right field line. Cam Jarrett getting the job done there. And another run scores to make it a 12-3 game. An RBI single for Jarrett. And now Cole Glassburn will step in. I think it's a 10 run rule rather than a 12. 12 I think is girls, but I could be wrong. We'll see if Glassburn gets a hit here, what will happen. A 12 to three lead for the Hillers. It could be 10 runs. We'll, I guess we'll find out, or maybe we won't. There's a strike, oh, hand one. In any case, things looking very good for the Hillers right now. Green and orange are rolling today. Have any news from the little cross game? Tennis game? Nope. 
And this is up the middle, picked up by the shortstop, throw to first in time for the third out of the inning, but not before the Hillers plate seven more runs, and they have a very comfortable 12-3 lead as we head to the top of the seventh on HCAM. Top of the seventh inning, Milton down to their final three outs, and they have a lot of work to do they, trailing 12-3. Oh, they, oh, they got work. Oh, they got a lot of work. What uh, Coach Simos has done is he's taken out his horse and brought in his uh, closer, Connor Kelly. Now I give Ronnie, this is my vote, Ronnie Seamus, the uh, defensive play of the game, and Stevie Simos and Brendan Kelly tie for most valuable players today. I agree. As Kyle Cowell steps in, bottom of the order for Milton, 7, 8, and 9. We do have a Hillers update we'll get to momentarily. There is ball one. The Hillers girls tennis team fell just short today Ooh. to undefeated Sharon over at Sharon High School. The final score of that matchup was Sharon three, the Hillers two. So the Hillers oh. certainly battled, but a great season comes to an end for the Hopkinton Hillers girls tennis team as they fall to Sharon three to two. That's okay. Well, they Look at how easy Connor Kelly's delivery is. Nice and smooth. That's fouled away. One and two. Can't win them all, Tom. Can't win them all. Certainly can't. But to win two matches against an undefeated team, it's pretty impressive. Very impressive. Hit over to right field, and that is past the reach of the Hillers right fielder. It is going to be a double for Kyle Cow. We'll bring up Graham O'Donnell, the first baseman. Jack Breslin out there in right field. Breslin just came into the game for the Hillers. O'Donnell is one for two today. So a leadoff double for Milton. Connor Kelly has one of the better breaking balls I've seen from any team this year. There's a strike. There it is. Isn't afraid to throw it three times in a row. Strike two. That's two in a row. Did we go for three? And there's strike three, one away. The trifecta. I'll bring up John Carey, the center fielder. So again, in case you're just tuning in, a big congratulations to the Hillers softball team. They took down Walpole on the road, five to four. Hillers softball moving on to the South Division One state or sectional <laughs> semifinals. Makes it there's look easy, strike. Connor Kelly does. He chopped, they chopped uh, the Rebels off at the knees, five to four. Set to deliver, down low. Two and two. We're in the top of the seventh, Milton down to their final two outs. Hillers leading 12 to three. Hillers plated several runs in the bottom of the sixth. Down low, full count now. Lots of runs. Wind up in the pitch. Swing and a miss. And actually that'll fill up the count. For those of you sitting in traffic, we're doing the best we can. And that is a fair ball. Throw to first, not a problem. Two away. Nice pick by Brendan Kelly. No advance by the runner. Two to three on the out. That'll bring up the top of the order, Jack Boylan. We'll say hello to Jack Whaley down in Naples, Florida, the golfer supreme. Former Hiller. Hiller is one out away from advancing to the South Division II sectional semifinals. 
Swing and a miss. Well, the last update I was able to see in the Twittersphere was Stoughton leading Milford 6-1. to one. That was quite a while ago, though, so not sure what the score is now. And the Hillers will be playing the winner of that game. At a place to be determined, at a time to be determined. That is right. Wind up and the pitch. Just low. That pitch a little low as well. Looks like Brendan Kelly is going to get the win here after some hard luck losses in previous playoff games. He deserves it. Followed away, that'll make the count two and two. Well, I wouldn't say losses, some tough outings in playoff games. Greater New Bedford Technical High and Duxbury last year. We have an update from Concord Carlisle. Hillers boys lacrosse over there, and right now the score of that game is Concord Carlisle five, the Hillers three after one half of play. That game had a 5 p.m. start. Hiller is the three seed, Concord Carlisle the two seed in boys lacrosse. And this is up the left side, picked up by the third baseman. Throw to first, no problem. And that'll do it. The Hopkinton Hillers are moving on to the Division II South sectional semifinals. They get the 12-3 win here today against Milton. Larry, that was just a great all-around performance by the Hillers today. Yeah, and the lights come on just, just as we're going to wrap here. That was a really well-played game. That was a tough opponent. Coach Simos told me before the game, these kids are really good, play really good defense. They wanted to play on the turf field based on the Hillers' defense this year, but was not to be for the Wildcats from Milton. Now they get a fight for traffic all the way home. Well, the Hillers moving on to take on the winner of Stoughton and Milford in the Division II South Sectional State Semifinals. The final score for the final time. The Hopkinton Hillers defeat the Milton Wildcats 12-3 and are moving on to the sectional semifinals. For John Ritz on camera, my broadcast partner Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for watching Hopkinton Hillers Playoff Baseball on HCAM. Be sure to stay tuned to HCAM.TV for the latest Hiller Sports Playoff information. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon.